I, in this class, I'm going to start calculus, okay? Calculus. Don't worry, I will make it very simple. I know some students, with the messages I've received, they find calculus. That is, the mathematics that this with the fresher calculus, that is differentiation, and the integral calculus, that is the differentiation. They find them very difficult, but it's one of the easiest topics in mathematics. The reason why it's difficult is because people that are teaching it, they make it difficult. So I'm going to assist you to make it simple. The only thing I need from you is your time and dedication. Now, let me explain something to you. Before you learn any calculus, the first thing any teacher should teach you is about two variables, two types of variables. Very important. That is, the dependent and the independent variables. Okay? These type of variables are very, very important for you to understand calculus. What are they? One is dependent. The other is independent. For instance, you are a person. You need to grow. What do you need to grow? You need food. Now, let's classify these two. Food and growth. I want to ask you, which one do you think is dependent here and the one that is independent? As you can see in this place, for you to grow, you need food. Growth depends on food. So, therefore, our growth here is dependent variable Why the food is independent variable. Because the food does not depend on anything that has to do with growth from this guy. But the growth depends on the food. These two, where you try to relate them with themselves, one depends on one. So growth depends on food. We call it what? Independent variable. And this is what dependent variable. Very important. Now let's check again. This is a man. The man is sick. He has some ailment. You administer drug to this man. I want to ask you, the healing process of this man, okay? Does the drug depends on the healing or the healing depends on the drug? The healing depends on the drug. Therefore, this is independent variable. Why this is what? The dependent variable. So what does this have to do with calculus? Remember the calculus we are considering now, we want to start with this differential calculus. Differential calculus is about the rate of change, rate of change of quantity. Why this is accumulation, accumulation of what? Quantity is the opposite of what? Is the opposite of differentiation. Again, the question I ask, what is the connection of this to calculus? That is starting with differential calculus. Let's see. Now, if you want to plot a graph, we plot the graph, the y axis and the s axis. What should always be in s axis? S as is, is the owner of independent variable. Any independent variable, any variable you are considering, the independent is always S as is, Why the Y is dependent. I will show you something that you can use to remember. Dependent. How do you remember this? Let me ask you a question. This is a man. This is the earth surface. Okay? This is a man. Who depends on whom? The earth was there before the man came into existence. So the man depends on the earth. As you can see, this earth is flat now. Where the man is staying, even where you are saying it's flat, we know that the earth is round, but the place you are standing at is flat. Okay? As you can see, this is flat. So this is what? The independent variable. The independent variable. So this is S. Our earth is X. 
This man I stand, as you can see, the man is standing vertical. So this man is the dependent. He's depending on the earth. So he's why? So I am depending on the earth to stand. So I am vertical. The earth is horizontal. The world we are seeing here, not the round earth. The place you are standing. So this is enough for you to remember now, okay? When you take off the earth flat, S, you standing on it. I'm depending on the earth, so I am Y. This is X, okay? When you are doing some research, I don't know if you have done your master's or your PhD, you will find that what? You need all these terms. Dependent variable, independent variable, moderative variable, and so on and so forth. There are many, okay? Depends on the one you are doing, control variable, and so on and so forth. Now, we are not interested in that for this class. We are interested in this too. So now, I have a plant in my garden. This is a plant. I planted this plant, say, last week. So I want to study something. I'm interested in something. What do you want to study, mister? My interest is that I want a situation whereby I can measure the growth of this plant Relative to the water I will put in on the plant. I will pour the water on the plant. Pour the water on the plant. I want to see the sensitivity, the changes in the growth with respect to a little change of water. That is a little drop of water. I want to study if a drop of water will affect the growth of this plant. That is growth versus water, H2O. Now, the growth is dependent. So this is growth. This is what? The water I want to put. This is what? The independent variable. This is the dependent variable. I want to study the changes. One thing you will see in most books, you will see a perfect line like this. So now, if this is S, we want to ch check the change in S versus change the y okay that is as i drop water were there any changes was the change positive growth was it negative decrease or there was stagnation if there is a growth we say such is what positive if there is no growth close to zero we say what is stagnant but if it affect the growth assume the growth assume it decreased we say what? Whatever reason. We say what? It's negative. Okay, now. This, you are seeing here, this change in X versus change in Y for this, this is a starting point. Let's call this P. This is where we are currently. You agree with me, this is zero. As you are going like this, it continues to increase. Assume here is one. As you are going, here is two. Okay? Here is one. Up is three. So here is three. Here is one. So this and this. Now the changes here is two. Why here is one? So you agree with me the changes now is two over one, which is two. So this is the growth. The rate of growth of the plant with respect of a drop of water. This is what this one is telling me. Another person can take his calculation. I have here three. I have here two. Become three over two. Okay, where is differentiation coming in? Differentiation is coming in when we are closing this gap. That is a very, I don't know, you need microscope. You need a magnified glass to have this. That means the points are very close. This point you are seeing here, they are very, very close. Very close, like very close. We are using this one just for you to see. So that is what differentiation is all about. It's looking at that minute change. Minute. And that minute change, we represent it by, say, this data. This is not a big change, just minute. The smallest of the smallest of the smallest of the smallest, of the smallest change. In X versus smallest of the smallest change in Y. Are you getting it? 